four turn, and it does not look like Dana Carter is going to be able to stay on the late lap. The field comes by, and Carter drops down one lap behind. Of course, when that pace car comes around and passes you, you cannot pass the pace car. So Dana Carter will be at least one lap down. Now he begins to move out of the pit area. Here are the standings. Bobby Olivero, the leader. Sheldon Kinzer, second. Mark Alderson is third. Joe Saldana is fourth. We have completed 62 laps. And we have had two leaders in this race. Sheldon Kinzer led at the start. And then it was Bobby Olivero taking over the lead. We have had two caution periods, one for debris on the racetrack. And the other, which is the current yellow, we are under because of Keith Kaufman's stall car in turn number two. Well, Bob, you've got to say that Olivero is a bit of a surprise, not when you look back historically what he's done the past two or three years, but so far this year, we've not seen all that much from Olivero. He's kind of a quiet guy. He didn't say that much around the pit area, but super strong here today. Chuck Amati running near the back of the pack when he came down the front stretch the last time was pointing to his crew something in his seat. Now, I don't know if he's got a problem wrong with the race car. You see him again pointing down in the cockpit, and I can't quite figure out what it is, but Amadi is frantically gesturing to his crew, trying to ferret something out, trying to communicate. There are no radios in these cars. Like the Grand National cars, it's all done with hand signals. Chuck Amadi, a very colorful race driver. They call him the one-armed bandit. And most recently, he has picked up the name of the Rhinestone Cowboy, Chuck Amati from Freeman Spur, Illinois. Here is the car of Keith Kaufman being taken off of the racetrack by the wrecker. They're in the back stretch. As soon as this car is off of the racetrack and the pace car can pull in, we'll be back to green. We have completed 64 laps of 100 here in Springfield, Illinois, in the Tony Benton House in 100. And Bobby Olivero is the leader at this point. Sheldon Kinzer second. With the pit stop made by Ron Schumann, Joe Saldana now moves up into third again, and Mark Alderson is running fourth. In fifth place is the number one of Larry Rice, and then following Rice is Ricky Hood in car number four. Olivero, the leader, and he's anxiously awaiting this green fly because things were going so well, and I tell you, when you're up front, usually the last thing that you want to have is a caution flag. Sometimes when the car slows down, it heats up, and also it breaks your rhythm as a racing driver. Well, ESPN kicks off a new Saturday Night Boxing Series featuring many of boxing's established stars with 12 consecutive Saturday Night Primetime Specials. This is an extension of the already popular Thursday Night Top Ranked Boxing Series, which has proven to be one of the ESPN's highest-rated shows. Join us for Saturday Night in the Fights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 Pacific Time, live. Now the pace car moves down to the low side of the racetrack, but the Keith Kaufman car is not off the racetrack yet. It looks like maybe that both the Kaufman car and the pace car will come in at the same time, and the drivers will be instructed to go one more lap and then get back on the accelerator. You can see some of the pit crew members as the pace car pulls in, signaling their drivers by pit board, and I think perhaps that sign went to Chuck Amati, Larry, that you talked about previously, waving frantically to his pit crew, trying to indicate to them a problem in the cockpit of the race car. Yeah, I still haven't figured it out, Bob. There's no oil in the tail of the car. You know, sometimes oil starts shooting out of the gearbox or from the transmission, but there's no oil in the race car. He wasn't going slow enough to know that he has no low gear, so I don't know what it is. We may be going green, however, this time, and everybody up front knows what that is. Look at Sheldon Kinzer. He's ready to get going. Now we'll see if they get the green flag, and they do. The green is back, and we're racing once again at Springfield. Very interesting. The Keith Kaufman car was not pulled behind the wall and instead was dropped in the pit area here to the inside of the main straightaway. And it looks like that Keith will try to change tires and get back in the race. Joe Saldana making a move now as we drop the green flag. And in turn number three, Joe Saldana to the inside of the racetrack is battling side by side with second place Sheldon Kinzer. In the middle of that group in the black and orange car is Ron Schumann. And Bill Engelhardt, he goes to the high side of uh, Kennedy, still doesn't eclipse him. There's Doug Wolfgang on the right-hand side of your screen. Again, the black and orange car we're watching, Ron Schumann, was as high as second at one point, and he is really 
Finally, in the thick of some war, going down the back stretch, blasting into turn number three. Schumann staying right in there, though, not being intimidated by anybody. Schumann having lost a lap, trying to improve his position. position unfortunately had to stop for a tire change now battling frantically to get back up into the lead it is Bobby Olivero still leading this race now in second position is Joe Saldana Sheldon Kinzer has moved back to third fourth remains Mark Calderson and fifth is Larry Rice so Joe Saldana was in second place dropped back and is now back in second well, Chuck Amati on your screen there stops and had a conversation with his crew members. They walked over to the race car. There were a lot of shaking of heads. I thought they were going to put it behind the wall, but instead there was a gesture of frustration. They said, Chuck, go on back out. And Amati slowly dropped her in the first gear and rolled back out of the speedway. So still a mystery, Bob. I can't figure that one out. Here is the interval between first and second place position. Bobby Oliveira. Saldana or anyone catch Bobby Olivero. Olivero again qualified only 12th fastest here today, but blasted from the start running 12th starting position into the lead about a third of the way through the race. Ron Schumann, car number 21, continues to move up in position. He is currently eighth in that number 21 car and setting his sights on Ken Schrader in car number 39, trying to pick up another position. Ron Schumann from Mesa, Arizona, one of the top sprint car drivers, especially in the western part of the country, but I would think we would have to say nationwide. Ron Schumann, who was taught to drive basically by his older brother, Billy, once asked, who is the best back home? And there's a very competitive sprint car race that goes on back in the Phoenix, Arizona area. And without hesitation, Ron Schumann said, my brother Billy is the very best. There is Ken Slater, who runs in front of the position behind the number four car, which Ricky Hood jumped into this weekend. George Snyder was the most competitive driver of the Lefebvre number four, a car that's been a most competitive machine in championship dirt car racing for quite some time. And there is Schumann. And incidentally, we have now been told that Schumann did not lose a lap when he stopped with a tire. So he is on the late lap with the leader. There is sixth, seventh, and on the outside, Ron Schumann in eighth. number 39 and to the outside of the racetrack in 21 Ron Schumann running in eighth place Schumann now getting up into the marbles again up into that cushion and losing just a little bit to Ken Schrader Schrader it appears is set to make a move maybe on Rick Hood as they head into turn number three Ricky Hood in that car number four he was not assigned to that car today but did qualify it qualified it in the fifth position here is Elvin Felty in car number 47 from Lebanon Pennsylvania that car will try to make it into the pit area is moving very slowly out of turn number four and the question is will it necessitate a yellow I think he's going to be able to coast to the pit area meanwhile there's another car moving very slowly right behind him that is the number 32 of Arnie Knepper so two cars moving very slowly down the straightaway here hoping to have enough momentum to carry them into the pit area. Well, back in 1973, Elvin Felty was winning the championship near Laurel, Maryland at the Silver Spring Speedway in wing sportsman competition. In 73, Arnie Knepper was racing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The leader continues to be Bobby Olivero. We'll be back with more of our coverage of this part of the USAC Championship Dirt Car Division at Springfield, Illinois. The leader continues to be Bobby Olivero in car number 16 from Lakewood, California. and touched wheels with him. That was a very dangerous situation, Larry. 
Well, Schumann thought he had enough room to get underneath, but Schrader thought it was a car length above. Now Schrader, I don't know if he saw Schumann, or he simply decided to shut the door, but Schrader just came down, and in the way, unfortunately, was Schumann, but now Schumann goes to the high side. Well, they didn't slow him down any. He's picked up the pace and moved to the outside of the racetrack to try to pass Ken Schrader in car number 39. Schrader, meanwhile, looking to move into sixth position and the number six place car of Rick Hood. Seventh place battle, though, is side by side between Ken Schrader and Ronnie Schumann. Here they come out of turn number four, blasting down the main straightaway. That is the 79th lap completed. Let's run them down for you. It is Olivero, Saldana, Sheldon Kinzer, Mark Alden, Larry Rice, and then this race for sixth, seventh, and eighth position, Ricky Hood, Ken Schrader, and Ron Schumann. And turn number three, here they are. Well, Schumann seems to be able to run anywhere he wants in the racetrack. He made a nice move to get to the inside of Schrader that time and almost pulled off the double dip by getting Hood with the same move. Hood did see him coming, see him out there to the high side, goes Schumann. Schumann runs high, Schumann runs slow. He's hooked up very, very good. And I think if he could shake Hood and Schrader, he's got a shot of moving up closer to the front. Down the back stretch, here is Bobby Olivero down the front stretch. We'll try to get an interval here between first place Bobby Olivero and second place Joe Saldana. It is 3.4 seconds. So Olivero with a 3.4 second lead. And when you consider that the uh, is 32 seconds. That's quite a lead. We go back and pick up this battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth positions. Make that sixth, seventh, and eighth positions involving the number four of Rick Hood, Ron Schumann, and Ken Schrader. Down the back stretch, Ricky Hood has managed to keep his number four ahead of those two pursuing race cars for the past several laps, but it has not been an easy job for Rick Hood. Ron Schumann is out in the cushion down the main straightaway. He and Schrader are running side by side, and now it is Schumann moving to the outside of Rick Hood in turn number one. As strong as Schumann is running down low, he would like to get back down there, but the problem is Hood is planted there, and Schumann has to go to the high side, and Schumann jumps the cushion momentarily, and it costs him dearly as Schrader gets around. I was commenting that Schumann, you see how quick he is down in the bottom. He'd like to get around Hood and make a charge to the front, but Ricky Hood has done a perfect job down there in the bottom, but if Schumann is just break free, he's still got a chance. I think on this time, Bob. He did. Now let's watch Ronnie Schumann go. Now he has fourth position and a long stretch of racetrack in front of him, so he'll be standing on the gas and moving now to the number one of Larry Rice, who is running in fifth place. Here is Doug Wolfgang in number 75, again into the pit area, and it's been a long afternoon for Doug Wolfgang. He qualified in 15th position and has made several stops here this afternoon, so Wolfgang into the pit area once again. Ron Schumann, car number 21, now in sixth place, and is ahead of number four, Rick Hood. We'll see the interval between Ron Schumann and the fifth place car belonging to Larry Rice and number one. There is Rice just coming into the picture on the left-hand side of your screen. Here is Rice moving off of the fourth turn onto the main straightaway. Now crossing the start-finish line. It's about a half a straightaway advantage for Ricky, or rather for Ron Schumann over Larry, or Larry Rice, I should say, over Ron Schumann. Well, I think that Schumann may be running as fast as anybody on the racetrack. And I tell you, there's a guy who would really like to see one of those caution flags that we said earlier. If you're the leader, more often than not, even if you're tired, you still don't want to see. The leader continues.